did they say your son Ron killed? A man that owns a drugstore, Mr. Sloan. Who's gonna believe me? Who's gonna believe any of us? Who's ever believed any of us? It ain't fair. Nobody ever said life was fair. It ain't fair we gotta live from one picking season to the next. But we always done a good day's work for our wages. Whatever we are, we got no call to be ashamed. You really believe that, Ma? I know it, boy. I know it. Chicago, and there's to start back in training in two days. I don't believe it. I got a ticket. Don't tell me. A parking ticket. An illegal parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> finally got caught. <laughs> finally. Hey, Amina Mates parked right outside of City Hall. I figured I'd better pay the dime, right? That's supposed to buy me 60 minutes. So 45 minutes later, instead of 15 minutes to go, the meter says violation, and I gotta pay the city ten bucks, huh? Well, maybe you better get yourself a lawyer. Maggie, I will see this to the Supreme Court. Not only do I want a charges dropped, I want a refund of this. Yeah, I gotta show up, but I sure would like to frame that ticket. <laughs> You'd like to frame it? Get out of here, will you? That's a good idea. Uh, uh, Maggie. Hello. Can I help you? I'm Lucille Fields. A man, uh, he told me to come and see you. We need some help. Well, come right in. Tony? Hi. I'm Tony Petricelli. Um, Mr. Robert Miller of the Legal Aid, he told me to come and see you. He said you might help my son. You know, what kind of help does he need? They put him in jail. Said he killed a man. There's no way that could happen. He wouldn't hurt anyone. They want you to sit down? I got a level with you right up front, Mr. Petra. That's, um, that's Petricelli. We ain't got no money, none. So if you say you can't help us, I'll understand. But I just got to get help. They got Ron in jail, and I know he's scared. Look, let's, uh, let's worry about the money later, huh? 
Oh, by the way, this is, um, this is my wife, Maggie. And uh, you can call me Tony, OK, Mrs. Fields? But if you call me Lucille, you see, nobody ever called me Miss Fields. <laughs> Sounds a bit fancy. Who did they say your son Ron killed? A man that owns a drugstore, Mr. Sloan. Do you know him? Never heard of him till last night. You see, we don't know no one here. My husband and children, we're just passing through on our way to Lee's Point. We're croppers, pick crops according to the season. Our truck broke down outside of town. My husband's not well. So Ron went into town to get some medicine. He found a drugstore. And now they're saying he killed a man that owned it. How old is your son? Well, Ron's 20, but he's lots older in many ways. And he's smart, smarter than all of us. Mr. Petricelli, there's two things in this world I'm sure of. There's always something in tomorrow to look forward to. And my boy would and could harm no one. Do you think you might be able to help us? I'll give it one hell of a try. I sure do thank you. We all do. How many children do you have? Seven. Two of them in the ground never made it through their first year. And the oldest, he's uh, back in Ohio, doing real fine, raising his own family now. Lucille, how did you get here? Walked. Maggie, you drop me off at the jail so I can see Ron, and you take Lucille back to the camp, hmm? Oh, no. You're just seeing Ron is plenty. Walking's good. Gives everybody a chance to be by himself. Oh, no. Today, I insist. I'd like the company. OK. Instructions. I'm not to leave the prisoner alone. Hey, look, he happens to be my client. And according to the law, he has privileged time with his lawyer. Now, either you get your butt out of here, or I'll have you up in charges so fast that you'll be my client's cellmate, you dig? I'll be just outside. Make sure you're outside of earshot, huh? They haven't been giving you a rough time. No, I want to get out of here. Who are you? Well, I'm a lawyer. Your, your mother came to see me. How's Ma? Is she all right? No, no, she's, she's, she's fine. She's a little concerned about you, confused, but then that's what I'm here for. What are you here for? To help you if I can. Why should you? We ain't got no money. Well, you're entitled to a defense. Now, look, I want you to fill me in as much as you possibly can. In other words, I can't help you. We'd been picking melons in the Coachella Valley till they were picked out. We had to keep working, and we heard they was hiring down to Lee's Point. We wanted to get over there before they was all hired out. We'd been on the road a couple of days, my ma and pa and the kids. Pa's been real sick of late, and I've been trying to help out any way I can. Well, anyway, just as we were coming into San Remo, our truck broke down. You feel all right? Cool drink will help. No fuss. I'm fine. 
It is hot, ain't it? About as hot as this engine. The truck had been in bad shape for a long time. We just didn't have the money to get it fixed. But this mechanic said that he'd try to help us out. <laughs> All right, look, mister, we can give you $30. Now, can you help us? Not much, but uh, maybe I can get her going. Uh, leave her here. I'll work on it tonight. Come back tomorrow. All right, thank you. Say, you know some place where we might camp out tonight? There's as good as anywhere. Uh, he told us we could camp out across the road, and Mom wanted us to start unpacking. Okay. She was concerned about Let's the kids go. being tired and about Pa and his cough, which was getting worse. <laughs> I was worried, too. You need some more of that syrup. Oh, it's OK. That stuff's too sweet. <coughs> go to town, find a drugstore, and tell him you want some good cough medicine. Otherwise, he'll never sleep tonight. All right, Mom. Wait. Tell him not to make it too sweet. I, uh, I hitched a ride into town. I didn't know where to go, but I, I found this street, uh, Kent Street. There were a few stores there, and I figured I could find a place that had cough medicine. Well, it was getting kind of late, and the stores were closing, but there was this drug store. The door wasn't quite closed, and there were a few lights on inside. And I wanted to get the medicine real quick and hitch back to our camp before it got dark, because I knew Ma and the kids would be waiting for me. I went on in, but I didn't see anybody there. I figured the owner or whatever must have stepped out for a minute, but I wondered why he'd just leave everything open like that. Well, I looked around up front and then went Whoa. to the back counter. And there was nobody there either. Anybody home? All of a sudden, I tripped over something and fell. Kind of got the, the wind knocked out of me for a second. Nobody else was in the store? No, sir, I, I don't think so. Does it matter? Yeah, well, it might. Okay, go on. Well, I, I caught my breath and, and got up from the floor. It was then that I noticed the blood all over my hand. There was a, a pair of scissors on the floor. And they had blood on them, too. Then I saw the, the body of this man lying next to me. And I knew he was dead. And I got scared, and then I just ran. I was running and running, and until all of a sudden somebody had a hold of me, you know? And I, then all of a sudden, the police were there, and they were saying I'd done it. Well, look, all I'd done was walk into that store. Now, that's the truth, mister. I swear it. Those guys are chased. You, know, you never saw them before. Never. Never been in that neighborhood before, either. <laughs> mister, I ain't never even been in this town before. Now, look, I got to get out of here. My mom needs me. What about your father? My pa's dying. I'm sorry. Are you sure of that? Ma knows. She just doesn't say anything. He's been getting worse now for the last few months, and <laughs> the pa doesn't make any mention of it. You know, he was the strongest man that I ever known, and now he just sits around and stares and coughs and makes all kinds of plans inside himself. So you see, I got to get out of here. Yeah, I see. Look, I don't want you to talk about this with anyone. Not even you? I don't know. Me, you can talk to. I'm a lawyer. Why are you my lawyer? Two reasons. I know what it is to be poor. And your mother asked me. I'll see you, kid. What do you say, Charlie? Only three more months, huh? If I had a good lawyer, I'd been out by now. Should have hired me, kid. Have a nice talk with the hillbilly? Excuse me. Yeah, we talked. Mm. Bet he just broke your little Italian heart, didn't he? Well, come on, Punch. You know I've got no heart. Ah, well, you ain't got any brains either if you take him on. This conversation leading us somewhere? The scissors, the murder weapon, had his fingerprints all over it. Look, the boy says he's innocent, and I believe him. Here's something else you better believe. He said he went to buy medicine, didn't he? Yeah, right. Medicine costs money, don't it? Look, so's my time, Ponce. Come on, get to the point. When we picked him up right after the murder, he didn't have one red cent on him. That looks to me like he came to rob and stayed for a killing. Don't you go missing me now. I'll see you later. You're a hard man to miss. He's 
okay, honey. We got him a real good lawyer. Uh, Rita, this here's his wife, Mrs. Petra. Uh, Maggie. Hello, Rita. Hi. I'm Sissy. Well, hello there. It's nice meeting you, too. And this here's Buster. Buster? Hi, Maggie. And this here's my husband, Calvin. Welcome. Uh, I brought some candy. Would it be all right if they had some? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see, you'll break Maggie's hands. <laughs> Can I have another one for later? I think it'd be all right. Uh, I'll just give the rest to your mother. Wouldn't want them to melt in my purse. Oh, thank you. Uh, I brought you a cough medicine, Calvin. Oh. Any news about the truck? Yeah, bad. Says he can't fix it for 50, let alone 30. What's wrong with it? Age is what's wrong with it. <coughs> Maggie, you'd better run along. I've already taken you out of your way. Uh, would you do me a favor? Sure, just ask. Well, I'm from Texas, and I was brought up on the most delicious barbecue ribs you ever tasted. And I was thinking that if you and your family would be kind enough to come to our house for dinner tonight, well, it'd give me a chance to fix a real Texas-style dinner. Only if you let us help. It's a deal. <laughs> OK, uh, we'll pick you up about 5 o'clock. And it's been a real pleasure meeting all of you. Thank you, Maggie. Maggie's married to a real fine man. And if you ask me, a smart one, too. Why don't you tell me you had no money when you went into that store? He never asked. I asked you for the whole story. I didn't know it was that important, is it? Look, when people go into a store and want to buy something, they either have cash or they have a charge, huh? Now, exactly what were you planning to do? I was going to find the owner or whoever and, and try to work it off. And what if you couldn't work it off? Now, look, the DA is going to ask you the same thing, and you better come up with an answer. <sighs> then I'll tell him the truth. And what's that? I would have begged. I swear to God, mister, it's the truth. OK, kid. That's a good answer. Hello. Hi, Don. Howdy, Tony. Hi, Pete. Want to spill my beer? <laughs> no. I might want your help. Okay, you got it. Shoot. It's the Fields case. I want you to start digging. The dead man's name is Andrew Sloan. I'll talk to the widow. I want you to find everything there is to know about the guy, who he liked, who he didn't like. Or maybe who didn't like him. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Also, check out his personal affairs, you know, financial or whatever. Next, check out his sales and prescription records. I'm sure they've been impounded. Is there anything else? See if anybody knows anything, um, even slightly off center, about either the man or the store and find out about what time the store usually closes, and see if you can find out if anybody went in or out of the store around closing time. Anything else? Yeah, Pete. I want to help that kid. I'll see you later, Tony. What Anthony J. Petricelli? Uh-huh. What's a huh? You know what's a huh? Tell me. Repeat the question, Your Honor. Do you know what Anthony J. Petricelli? Yeah. You love me. <laughs> We're having Texas style barbecued ribs tonight. Texas style ribs tonight. I invited the fields over for dinner. Oh, that's nice of it. You know what? What? I love you.
Mrs. Sloan? Yes. Uh, I'm Anthony Petricelli. I'm a lawyer. You're the fifth one since yesterday. I'm sorry, I already have an attorney. He's just left. No, no, no. I, uh, I'm really not looking for business. I am looking for some help, however. How can I help you? Well, I represent the boy who was arrested. And if you could do anything to shed some light, to help... You want me to help you defend the man who killed my husband? Ma'am, I, um... I honestly believe that that boy is innocent. Would you like something cold to drink? That'd be nice. I'd like to know about your husband. Could you tell me anything about him? Stubborn. Foolish. Strong-willed. Kind. Kindness killed him. I'm sure of that. Well, how do you mean? Well, some men spend their lives giving, and other men spend their lives taking. Andrew was a giver. I think he was also a fool. Well, I, uh, I don't quite follow. No, I'm sure you don't. I never really did myself. You know, years ago, this was a good neighborhood. We opened this store. It was our dream. Well, the store never grew, and the dream never grew. We just grew old and useless like everything else around here. You could have moved locations. Could you move Mount Rushmore? No. Oh. Andrew felt, you know, he couldn't leave his friends, his neighbors. They need me, he said. So he stayed, and he gave too much credit, and he never raised his prices, and everybody loved him. Did he have any trouble with anybody you can recall? Was there, was there anybody bothering him? No, nobody ever bothered Andrew. He just saw the good in everybody. He sounds like quite a guy. Stupid. I mean, look around this place. Is this worth a life's work? It just doesn't make any sense. A good man spends his whole life caring about people. And what does he get rewarded with? A tramp, like bum off the street. Doesn't know anything about kindness. Sticks a scissors in him and says thank you. Well, now I'm gonna leave here. I've signed the papers. You sold the store? Yes. This was Andrew's store, and he's not here anymore. I have to look out for myself now, Mr. Petricelli. You can understand that. Yes. But I wonder if Andrew would. <laughs> Smell good? <laughs> Ooh, I don't think I ever smelled anything that good in my life. Well, thank you. <laughs> Real peaceful here. Yeah. Sure appreciate your having us. How's my boy? He's fine. He's fine. Matter of fact, he sent his regards to everyone. Well, I'm gonna go in and change the clothes. Excuse me. to that widow? Yeah, she was taking care of business. I have a hunch it was real interest in business. Well, why is that? I got to look at that prescription ledger. Do you know that drugstore was doing a big business in cocaine, morphine? Do they have customers on a regular basis? A few. Well, I'm already on it. I'll have more for you tomorrow. You know, Pete, there's something that really bothers me about all this. Andrew Sloan's wife said he really cared about people. Well, so? So a man like that would never refuse a bottle of cough medicine to a boy like Ron. Uh, all right, all right, there you go. Thanks. Look, don't worry none about that truck of yours. I got a friend who can fix it. He owes me a favor. I hate to bother you, but if it wouldn't be too much trouble, I need to talk to Ron. Yes, certainly. 
I, uh, I've got some business in town. I'll take you in right after we eat. Thank you, Mr. Petricelli. for a minute, please? Yeah. Oh, I'd like you to meet uh, Mrs. Fields. This is Ron Fields' mother's Lieutenant Ponce. I do, ma'am. I'd appreciate it if I could talk to my boy. Yes, ma'am. Go uh, right up these steps, turn to your left, go through that door, and tell him I said it'd be all right. Thank you. I won't be long. You take your time, Mrs. Fields. Lieutenant, my boy never hurt that man. Seem like a nice lady. Yeah, that she is. She's right. The kid didn't do it. I wish I could believe that, but there's too much going against him. Look, the kid had no money. He was willing to work it off. You might have convinced me of that before, but not now. Well, why not now? Got an eyewitness. I think we finally know exactly what happened that night. Seems this man seen your boy coming down the street. Watched him check out the drugstore. The kid tried to get in, but seen the door was locked. He looked around, then he busted in. Now, realizing Fields wasn't no ordinary customer, our witness, Mr. Glass, went to his phone to report the break-in. Now, you look, mister. I need it, and I want it now. Go on, get out, get Whatever he wanted, he couldn't pay for it. Sloan wouldn't let him have it. So from all the mess in there, it looks like a fight started. He grabbed the scissors, and that is it. After our witness called the police, he got back in time to hear the fight and see Fields running out of the store. So I think that's just the icing on the cake. We got the boy nailed solid. You tell his mama I'm sorry. No, not just yet, I won't. Kids. You're doing just fine. We had a real good dinner over to Petricelli's. I'm sorry if I brought shame to you. You never brought me nothing but good. I'm scared, Ma. I'm scared. I ain't never gonna get out of here. Don't talk that way. There ain't no other way to talk, Ma. They're gonna hang me or... No, boy. You're innocent. What's that matter, Ma? Huh? Who's gonna believe me? Who's gonna believe any of us? Who's ever believed any of us? We, we ain't been nothing but, but trashed anybody. Always the first to, to, to be blamed for anything. Mr. Petricelli, believe. <laughs> Ma, that ain't enough. That just ain't enough. That ain't enough to make them believe. It ain't fair. Nobody ever said life was fair. It wasn't fair I buried two of your brothers before they was a year old. It ain't fair we gotta live from one picking season to the next. But we always done a good day's work for our wages. And we've never done wrong to no one. And we've always been a family. Whatever we are, we got no call to be ashamed or feel sorry. In the good Lord's eyes, we're living the life he picked for us. He's taken care of us before, and he's going to now. You really believe that, Ma? I know it, boy. I know it. That's right, a 1953 single barrel carburetor. You gonna stock anything earlier than a 60? Do you know where I might find one? Oh. Uh, thank you. And thank you. You're welcome. How about a root beer? Great. Listen, now, where's Pete? He's supposed to be here about a half an hour ago. Yeah, well, he phoned and he wanted to know if you were here, and he said that he was on his way. Well, we gotta get moving on this in a hurry. Thanks, honey. Mm-hmm. Doug, I'm sorry I'm late. Where you been? Oh, you're just doing. Doing what? 
Yeah? Well, uh, there are an awful lot of interesting things happening there on Kent Street. Such as? Oh, you know the Allied Industries Company? Yeah, yeah, it's a big conglomerate, so? Yeah, well, they've been doing a lot of urban renewal here in San Remo. OK, enough of the urban renewal. Next. Next. I found out that they made an offer to buy all the stores on the south side of Kent Street. They want to put up some housing. OK, I got that, yeah. The interesting thing is that everybody on that street wanted to sell but one person. You want to guess who that was? Andrew Sloan. That's right. And without that drugstore, there's no deal. But with them dead... They sell and they all make a profit. Mm -hmm. Which opens up a lot of motive for a lot of people. And there's one more thing about that prescription ledger. Mm. What, do you have a name? Twice a week, like clockwork, for the last six months. I'm trying to trace it now. OK, Pete, you keep going on that. I'm going to... I'm going to go down to Ken Street and have a chat with some of Mr. Sloan's old neighbors. Morning. Uh, oh, good morning. Can I help you? Hey, you like that, huh? Well, it's a little casual for me. <laughs> OK. Actually, I want to ask you if uh, Mr. Mitchell was around. Are you from the construction company? No, no, no. My name's Anthony Petricelli. I'm Ron Field's attorney. Oh, well, uh... Dad's just over at Mr. Martin's barber shop. I'm oh. David Mitchell. Hi, David. Hi. Thank you. David, is there anything you can tell me about Mr. Sloan? Like what? Like, why would anybody want to kill him? <sighs> he was the nicest man I've ever met. In what way? He cared about us, about the people who live around here. He was always willing to help. Mm -hmm. If you could help him, would you? Sure, but how can I help? He's dead. By helping to find the man that killed him. You see, David, Ron Fields is innocent. So if there's anything that you know at all... I... Well, I'd like to help, mister. I really would, but I just don't know anything. OK, thanks anyway. Sure thing. Yeah, I'll be waiting in just a minute. You, uh, you Mr. Martin? Yeah, that's right. Mr. Mitchell? Cyrus, will you sit still? Uh, I'm Anthony Petricelli, uh, Ron Field's attorney. The boy that killed Andrew? Well, no, there's no proof of that. Well, they arrested him. Well, he's not been convicted yet. Uh, what do you want from us? Well, anything that might help him. We don't know anything. Well, at the time of the killing, did you guys see or hear anything? We heard, but we didn't see much. We were right here having a cup of coffee. We heard all the noise and ran outside, and there was a kid running. And Andrew was dead. Well, Mr. Sloan was a friend of yours, I suppose. Did you like him? <laughs> like him? I suppose so. I didn't understand him. I suppose I liked him all right. He was a stupid man. Because he wouldn't sell to the developer? Yes, that's right. He was a stubborn old fool, and not only that, he was stopping the rest of us. Well, he's not anymore. Well, it's not a nice thing to say, but that boy did us a favor. Now his wife owns the store, and she'll sell out with the rest of us. And just in time, too. Yeah, another week, and they withdraw the offer, and then we're stuck here, and we'll never get out. That might sound to some people like a good motive for wanting them dead. Good. It was the answer to a prayer. Yes? I'm sure Mr. Sloan would be glad to see how well you guys have been bearing up. And maybe between tears, if you have enough money left. He'll buy some flowers for his grave. You got a big mouth. Well, honey, how are Lucille and the kids? They're fine. But I'm worried about Mr. Fields. He's not getting any better. Tony, isn't there something we can do to help them? Well, I don't think so. Not without taking part of their pride away. Well, there has to be something. I know, baby. It's funny. I, I, I know I'm close, but the apple just won't fall out of that tree. Hey, P. 
Pete. You smell like you've been drinking axle grease. Oh, is it? Oh, it, uh, I, I came up with something that might interest you. There we go. The name in the prescription ledger, the twice a week name, I finally ran it down. And? Belongs to a man named Harry Elder. Been a regular customer at that drugstore. Mm, what, did you talk to him? Not quite. He's been dead for the last six months. You know, baby, I think I just caught the apple. And what's this for? I got a gut feeling, Pete. I want you to check out every name on that list, see if any one of them ever had any record of drug addiction. And you need it yesterday. Don't you ever need anything tomorrow? You were across the street at the time of the crime? Yes, sir. And would you please describe to the court exactly what you saw, Mr. Glass? Yes, sir. I saw that young man there. You mean the defendant, Ron Fields? Yes, sir. I saw him come down the street and break into the drugstore. And then? Well, I went to call the police. When I came back, I heard the ruckus. Then I saw him come running out. Thank you. Cross. Mr. Glass. Now, you're sure it was the defendant that you saw? Yeah, I'm sure. Even though it was very late in the day? That's right. Even though, even though you were more than 200 feet away, you still say it was him? Look, I saw him come out, too. It, yeah, it was him, all right. Well, I'm sure that you, you saw Ron come out, which helps you believe that you saw him go in. But what if it wasn't him? Well, if it wasn't him, then who could it have been? Who, indeed? No more questions. Mr. Bray? No questions. The witness is excused. The people call Lieutenant John Clifford Ponce. And the defendant was arrested at 5.48 p.m. Uh, what happened then? They went back to the drugstore and found Mr. Andrew Sloan dead of a stab wound. And the murder weapon? The murder weapon is the scissors that were marked People's Exhibit 2. Now, how about fingerprints on the scissors? They were the defendants. Thank you. Mr. Petrocelli? Well, Lieutenant, I see by the police report, you know, I never could read your writing, <laughs> that the fingerprints are three partials of Ron Field's right hand. Oh, well, my goodness, you seem to read that pretty good. <laughs> but that is correct. Mm -hmm. And there were further smudges on the scissors that might have been other prints, but could not be identified as such. That's right. Now, isn't it all possible that they could have been from someone else? Well, it's possible, but... No further questions. Thank you. Mr. Bright? No questions. The witness is excused. Your Honor, that uh, concludes the case for the people. You were right. One of them was hooked on drugs. Are you ready with the defense, Mr. Petrocelli? Um, yes, Your Honor. The defense calls to the stand Mr. Cyrus Mitchell. Uh, yes, I worked next door to Andy Sloan for oh, over 20 years. And do you know of anyone who have had reason to have killed him? No real reason, no. Mr. Mitchell, have you ever heard of the the Sattinger Clinic in Flagstaff, Arizona. Yes. Is it the a clinic for the rehabilitation of drug addicts? Yes. Uh, objection, Your Honor. I fail to see relevancy here. Your Honor, the matter of relevancy will be shown clearly. Overruled. Was your son a patient there? Yes. And when did he return to San Remo? Seven months ago. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Mr. Bright? No questions. You may step down, Mr. Mitchell. The defense calls David Mitchell. And 
Now, you were released from the Sattinger Clinic seven months ago. Yes, sir. You were cured? Yes, sir. Was Mr. Sloan supplying you with drugs? No, sir. I'm cured. I don't need any. Are you sure? Yes, sir. David, would you roll up your sleeves and uh, show us your arms? I'm going to ask you again, David. Did Mr. Sloan supply you with drugs? Yes. Did he sell them to you? No, he gave them to me. Why? One night, a couple of weeks after I got back, I knew I needed something. I didn't know what to do. So I broke into Mr. Sloan's store, tried to get some stuff. He caught me. But he didn't turn you in. No, sir. He was too good a man for that. He said he was afraid I might do something bad if I didn't have them. So he agreed to let me have enough to try and taper off with. So he supplied you with drugs for six months by signing for them with a dead man's name. Then he stopped, didn't he? He said he could see that he wasn't helping me, just hurting me more. And then I'd have to go back for more treatment. Your Honor, let me take you back to Kent Street, the time of the killing. Picture David Mitchell, an addict in need of drugs. Source cut off. Not knowing what to do and his habit getting worse, he decides to try and break into Sloan's pharmacy. He was seen from across the street by Paul Glass, Lieutenant Ponce's eyewitness, whose testimony you've just heard. Now, Glass watched him in front of the store, and when Mitchell forced the door, Glass went inside to phone police and report a break in. David Mitchell was familiar with the drugstore's layout. Mr. Sloan had been supplying him with drugs for six months, and David knew just where to look. The drugs were kept in a locked cabinet at the back of the store. He needed something to force the cabinet, so he picked up the scissors. And it was there Andrew Sloan surprised him. Who's back there? I can hear you now. Who is it? Somebody's back here now. What? David. David, you. I believe that as Andrew Sloan grabbed and shoved David into the wall, he was accidentally stabbed. David Mitchell never meant to harm Mr. Sloan. It was then that Ron Fields walked into the most bizarre mix-up of his life. As David Mitchell concealed himself, Ron came in to get some cough medicine for his father. Whoa. Mr. Glass never saw him enter the store because he was inside on the phone with the police. It was dark in the drugstore, and Ron had no way of knowing that David Mitchell was also there, hidden behind a display rack. Ron tripped and fell to the floor. David watched him, frozen with fear, not daring to move as Ron discovered Mr. Sloan's body. Ron was gripped with panic. He didn't know what to do. He was scared. Should he stay and report the murder? Who would believe him? His instincts told him to run, and that's exactly what David Mitchell was hoping for. Ron ran out, and Mr. Glass gave chase, mistaking him for David Mitchell. Glass left too soon to see David emerge from the store and join in the chase himself. Isn't that about what happened, David? Now, remember, anything you say may be used against you.
I never meant to hurt Mr. Sloan. He was the nicest man I've ever met in my life. He was my friend. I just needed the drugs. I couldn't live without them. Just a little bit. <laughs> I see you're all ready to go. Yep, we're all ready. Children, go see if your pa needs anything. Mr. Petrocelli, what's going to happen to that poor boy? Well, it was unintentional, so he'll get rehabilitation, not jail. That's your blessing. Mr. Petrocelli, uh, I guess there ain't no way I can properly say thank you. Ah, oh, forget it. It won't be much. But we'll be paying you regular. No, no, the court will take care of that. Are you sure? I'm sure, and I'm the bookkeeper. <laughs> hey, where's Pete? He said he's going to meet us here. Hey, Mr. Ritter. <laughs> She's all set to rip. Oh, okay, Great. kids, climb on. Get on the back. Mr. Charlie, thanks again. I appreciate it. Oh, hey, I've got something. I made some sandwiches, and there's candy for the children. Thank you. You're a special lady, Maggie. And you've got a special man. I know you're man enough to know what's in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Well, Buster. <laughs> Sissy, write me sometime, okay? Rita, oh, honey, come see us. Just an old softy, aren't you? And if you weren't so covered in grease, I'd give you a kiss. Oh, the hell with it. 